Hi, I'm Paxton and I'll be your tour guide today. Behind me we have Pearson Hall. This is one of our freshman dorms on campus. Today I'll be showing you dorm rooms. Come inside. The only way to get into campus is if you have an ID card, so you'll have to like swipe into all the dorms. And then over here, we have an intercom system. So through every dorm, we have these like dial buttons within the dorm rooms and then outside. So say you're visiting somebody, you don't live here, you would dial their room number and then you can actually call their room and they can unlock the doors to the dorm through the intercom system and you can talk to them, they can see you through a camera and they can unlock the doors for you so they don't have to leave the room. It's really nice to have. So right here we just have our main lobby. Um, every floor has a lobby. In, in the lobbies we just have like TVs and stuff. You can watch movies, play video games, you can hang out with friends, do homework, play card games. Um, it's just a nice little hangout area to have. Um, and then right here, this is what we call our RA office. So every single night there will be an RA in the office. They're just there for your needs if you have any issues with like toilets or sinks or anything being clogged. They'll always be in there for your help. Um, if you have questions about anything, you can always come see an RA here. Um, and then over here, we have mailboxes. Every student has a mailbox. They are really small. The only thing they can fit is like card-sized items. Throughout campus, you'll see our mail room when you go on your actual tour later on, and that will be in one of our other buildings where you'll receive bigger packages. All right, so here's the laundry room. So in the laundry room, you don't have to save quarters or use quarters. I know it says 25 cents, but it is included with living on campus. And then there's one on every floor and every side of floor, so there's two on every floor in Pearson. So every student has keys to their dorm. And then as you come in, um, you will see our intercom system right here that I talked about in the entranceway. So this is where you would like unlock the door for visitors, talk to them. Um, and then one really nice thing about it is there is a security guard button right there. So if you were to have somebody like calling your room constantly at like 5 o'clock in the morning because some student forgot their keys, you could actually press the security guard button and it will lock them in that little box that we entered to into the dorm. It'll lock both the outside doors and the inside doors and call security. So it also has a nice safety measure through within your room. You don't even have to leave your room for that. So that's really nice. And then as we enter in this way, you'll see our, this is the half of our room looks like. So there's this, and then on the other side of the suite, there's a mirrored room that looks exactly like this. Um, the desk, the dressers, and the closets, and all of the drawers and stuff all come with. Um, you can decorate it any way you'd like. And then like mini fridges, TVs, anything like that, you would bring here. And then through here, we have our bathroom. So then as we come into the bathroom, you'll see that this side of the room has their own sink and toilet. And then as you come through, there's one shower shared between the two rooms. And then this side of the room has their own sink and toilet. And then there's the mirrored room right here. So then they share a little common space out there. And then this is the exact same stuff. And it's all the same. Here we have Cal Flush. This is our other freshman dorm on campus. It is across the street from main campus. We'll be showing another freshman dorm, the laundry room, and then the hangout lobby area. Come on in. So same thing as Pearson, um, to get into the dorms, you have to have a swipe card that unlocks and lets you in. All right, and then we have the same intercom system as we do in Pearson, and it runs throughout all of the dorms. And then in here is the lobby area where all the students hang out. We have like a TV so people can hook up like Xboxes or anything like that, DVD players, you can watch movies. I know RAs put on a bunch of activities down here. They do like movie nights um, with hot chocolate during the winter. We done, we've done like pumpkin carving and we watch a Halloween movie. Um, and so that's all done down here. And then it's the same thing over here. You can do some studying, you can hang out with friends, you can eat dinner if you want. And like I said, you can hang out with your RA, hang out with your friends, do homework, but follow me to the next part. So same thing as Pearson, every student has keys to their dorm. So when you first walk in, it's different than Pearson where there's no like two mirrored room. It's just one room with two students. The shelves, the desk, the drawers, all of the bed, like the beds and stuff all come with. 
Um, and then over here, it's the same for Pearson and Calb Flesh. You can control the air condition and the heat for the room, not the entire dorm, which is so nice because then it's between you and your roommate, not through hundreds of people in one building. <laughs> and then as we walk over here, you'll see that the sink is outside of the bathroom, which is so nice because obviously if your roommate's showering, you don't have to worry about not being able to brush your teeth or even use the sink or get a drink of water or anything like that. And then as we walk over here, um, you'll see only two roommates to one bathroom. And then the shelving space. And then instead of Pearson where they have uh, closets, you would have this whole shelving space and hangar area. And then same thing as Pearson, we have the intercom system over here where you can press the security guard button, you can talk to them, and then see them through the camera. Calflush also has mailboxes, they're the same size, they fit card sized items. And again, if you have any bigger packages, we do have a mail room on campus. So then through here, this is the laundry room. The difference between Pearson and Cowflesh is Cowflesh there's only one in the whole building and it's on the first floor, whereas Pearson has them on every floor. Um, but it is the same as they are included with living here, so you don't have to use quarters. It's free to the students. And that concludes the tour. Thanks for coming with. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to your counselor. Hope to see you around campus. Go Warriors! Welcome to Warrior Athletic Field, Indiana Tech men's lacrosse on tap today. The second ranked Warriors taking on the Saints from Siena Heights. Indiana Tech comes into this one with a 9-0 record now following St. Ambrose having to uh, retrospectively forfeit uh, the game against Tech, which was the first one of the season. So Indiana Tech now officially 9-0, 4-0 in whack play. Siena Heights coming into this one 5-3. They're on a four-game win streak. We'll get into that in a moment, but we'll start with Indiana Tech. Like I said, that first game of the season in which Indiana Tech lost 12-7 uh, has actually been forfeited by St. Ambrose. Not sure why, but Indiana Tech now 9-0 on the season. So, since the last time Indiana Tech played here at the Warrior Athletic Field, two games at Lords and at Taylor, dominant efforts for the Warriors, winning both of those, a combined plus 34 goal differential, a 20-5 victory against Lords on the road. It was just 9-4 at halftime, but a second half explosion for Indiana Tech powered them to the win. The score went 10-5 in the third quarter, and then the Warriors came and scored 10 unanswered goals to balloon the score to the eventual 15-goal win. Highlights from that one, four goals apiece for Nate Langell. Andrew Ryan with four as well to go on top of two assists. He got six points in that one. And Josh Ramley, four assists, continuing to dish it out. One goal to go along with that, five points. But the real big one, a 22-3 against Taylor. Now, Taylor is just 2-8 on the season, but nonetheless, a dominant game there once again for the Warriors. And it was Langell going to work once again. Six goals, two assists, eight points. Langell putting together a great run here, having a fantastic season. Andrew Ryan added two goals, two assists for four points. And as I was talking about Langell, taking a look at the conference stats uh, race, Langell is tied for third place in the conference with a total of 38 points, 23 of those being goals, 15 of those assists. Kyle Tubles in goal for Indiana Tech once again today, having a stellar season as well. He leads the conference in goals against with just 23. I believe that's six clear of second place. Save percentage, 65.2% and a 5.75 goals against average. He leads all those categories by a healthy margin uh, in the conference. Switching over to today's opponent, the Siena Heights Saints. Like I said, four-game win streak for the Saints coming into this one. All four of those are WAC games. They're 4-0 in conference play, as are the Warriors. This one has potential first place uh, implications on the line. We'll get to that in a second as well. But Siena Heights, four straight wins. Most of those came against teams Indiana Tech has already played. They beat Lords by one, Taylor by 12, and Lawrence Tech by seven. To contrast that, Indiana Tech beat Lords by 15, Taylor by 19, and Lawrence Tech by 10. So we will see how that plays out. Looking at those, you would think Tech should win this one by a few goals, by a, a somewhat comfortable margin. Uh, and so they're 
biggest win of those, a non-conference game against Cleary. Uh, they won that one 22-2, did the Saints. Now Cleary comes here and plays Indiana Tech on Saturday, uh, so that one could get ugly. We'll have to stay tuned, though. That'll be actually next Saturday, I believe, a uh, 4 o'clock start. And then so non-conference, they, they do have one common opponent. Uh, both teams have played Benedictine. And Siena Heights actually beat them by seven. Indiana Tech only beat that team by four points. Now, Benedictine is a ranked team, or at least they were at the time that Indiana Tech took them on early on in the season. Some of the players we'll highlight here today that will factor in for Siena Heights in number 13 jersey, it's Jake Gallagher. He's got 33 goals on the season, 12 assists, total points, 45. That's tied for first in the conference. He's tied for second in goals, like I said, with 33. And then next up, Eric Sismedia, number seven. He's looking to add goal number 30 this season. He's got 29 so far, nine assists, 38 points. He's this week's WAC Offensive Player of the Week, and he's fourth place in the WAC in goals, tied for third in points. Eric Sismedia is on a heater right now, folks. Number 11, Garnet Potter, 15 goals, 15 assists, 30 points. But... After the top three scores, those three we just named, there's a big drop in points for the Saints, so we'll keep an eye on the guys in 13, 7, and 11. The WAC Defensive Player of the Week is another one we'll keep an eye on. That's Fernando Robinson. who go along with 19 ground balls, but we'll keep an eye on that because the all boards and we saw against Aquinas, Indiana Tech didn't have a great start to the game on faceoffs. So if Robinson is on his game, that'll be a lot of early possession time uh, for Siena Heights right off the ball, uh, the faceoffs. This is a WAG game, and we're getting close to the end of the season. This game will officially put us over the halfway mark for the conference season, so we'll have four regular season games left. Two of those at home will be against Cleary next Saturday, and UM Dearborn will be here the following Wednesday. And I mentioned it, these are two of the top teams in the, for the Warriors or for Siena Heights in locking up home field advantage for the conference tournament because Indiana Tech, at least, would have wins over the next two teams in the standings, which would be Siena Heights and Aquinas. Be Aquinas. The other teams have only two wins at best, so pardon the collapse. If Tech wins this one here today, very likely that they would earn the first seed for the conference tournament coming up uh, towards the end of April. So Tech, the rest of their schedule fairly light. They've already played most of the higher end teams in the conference after today's game. So probably the last big one here for a time for the Warriors. But with that, we're going to go ahead and listen in to the uh, crowd mic for announcements of players and the national anthem. Players, officials, and spectators today's contest. As a member of the NAIA, the WAC is committed to true spirit of competition by being championship character to five core values the NAIA embraces. Respect, integrity, responsibility, serving leadership, and sportsmanship. We say each of you, as a official or spectator, abide by these values, thereby creating a positive environment which our athletes may participate, our officials may work, and you, the spectator, may enjoy. This time, we ask you all, please rise and gentlemen, remove your hats as we honor America, the playing of our national anthem. First, for the visiting Saints. The field for the Saints, a sophomore, number two, Devin Clemens. 
the junior, number seven, Eric Sismizdia. The junior, number eight, Fernando Robison. The senior, number 11, Garnett Potter. The freshman, number 12, Ethan Wisnik. The senior, number 13, Jake Gallagher. The sophomore, number 21, Ch Chance Snyder. The sophomore, number 24, Trey Strand. And the senior, number 32, Jack Callahan. And in the cage for the Saints is number 25, Vinny Jean. The head coach is Ian Hyde, the Spencer Masek. And now, second in the NI coaches, Stump and Pohol. Here's the starting line for your New York Warriors. The fifth year senior from Algonquin, Illinois, number six, Louis Check. A six foot junior from Brookfield, Wisconsin, number 13, Tom Petrakowski. The fifth year senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 20, Andrew Ryan. A six foot junior from Lindenhurst, Illinois, number 22, Nate Langeau. The five-year-old from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 33, Jonah Jarmus. The six-year, fifth-year senior from Powell, Michigan, number 35, Anthony Tedesco. The six-year sophomore from Mission, British Columbia, number 42, Josh Bramley. The six-year sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 55, Grant Seaman. The five-year-old junior from Chesterfield, Michigan, number 77, Samuel Badley. The big cage for the Warriors, a six foot freshman from St. Charles, Illinois, number 51, Kyle Tubo. All right, there we have it. Ready to get go, eager to do so here between these two teams. Looking to get started right at four o'clock. Deanna Tech looking to improve on their. 9-0 record so far, and off we go. Sienna Heights does win the opening draw. It'll be Jay Gallagher. He'll get it right off to Plemons. Right back to Gallagher here as Sienna Heights makes their changes and gets set up here on offense. Far side is Hunt. Gets behind the goal. Comes back out to this side now for Plemons. Sienna Heights just working this one around. Behind the goal, nice dodge there, gets rid of it. Pass was off target there from Sismadia. Indiana Tech picks up and goes the other way. Turning on the Jets, here we go. The Warriors, this is Ryan. He'll fire low, that one didn't make it to the goal. Check picks up, he'll shoot. That one bounced and was blocked there by the goaltender who is John. Indiana Tech still battling for it, picking it up is gonna be number 22, that is Langill. Out top for check. Vinny John in net for the Saints. Two bulls for Indiana Tech, as is the standard arrangement. Sam Bodley gets physical there with Jake Gallagher. Errant pass there goes long out of bounds, and Sienna Heights will take this one over. Trey Strand, the 6'3 sophomore, up the field, runs into a wall of Warriors, but is able to dish that one off. Brandon Hammer, can't wait to make some punts with that one. We'll see if he's able to throw any big hits today. Sismadia had it, bad pass again, but he'll pick this one up. No, he doesn't, still in the stick of Hammer. Trying to cut out in front, Potter, he was harassed by the Tech defense. Able to stick with it. Taking some stick checks there. Gets through him, makes the pass off to Gallagher up high. Pace slows here as Gallagher looks for what he wants to do. Pass there to Potter, caught off the, on the backhand. Behind the net, Sismadia tries to spin move again. Tech plays it nicely, makes the pass off. Moore tries to work it out top, couldn't collect the pass. That was Hammer, now it's in the stick of Plemons. Gallagher, back out. Sent across, Hammer. Got rid of it, comes around, shot clock winding down as he falls but gets the shot off, not in time for Gallagher. Great defensive stand there for Tech. Running the full 80 off of the shot clock. And the Warriors looking to go on the attack here and 
clear this one out. Into the middle, Bodley. Passes it across the line, and now here we go. Flanagan passes off, makes the change. Ryan all the way down in the far corner. Tries to make his way out in front of the crease. Gets rid of this one, sends it over to Cooper Langell. Cooper backs up a little bit, and now here he goes. Down the near side, one hand on his stick. Slows down, looks for a passing option. He gets it behind the net, but misfire on the pass to Ryan. That's a turnover for Indiana Tech. Is a decent crowd developing here today despite the cold weather. Plenty of Siena Heights fans making the uh, trek. It's one thing I've noticed about some of these lacrosse games is the visitors get a good turnout. In hockey, not as much the case. There are some teams that draw well on the road, but it's not generally. Gallagher, the Plemons, they keep working it down. Potter, Plemons again, up top for Hunt. Turn over there, Two Bulls goes back for it. Messing up on that pass there was Jarmus in all alone. Plemons shoots and scores. The turnover from Jonah Jarmus here. Read there but like a book by Plemons. Two balls caught out of his net. Can't recover in time. Had that entire left side. Didn't make a mistake. And so the Saints will strike first. Bring this one back out to center. Off the draw, Sienna Heights is going to win this one again, chasing it down. It was Robison. Had it knocked out of his stick, but did his job, and he'll run off the field now. Looking to extend their lead. Plemons has the goal, looking to make it two. Over to Potter. Back out, Plemons. Whipped across. Right along the goal line. Lost the handle on it right into the stick of two bulls. There's the pass from Jarmus. Gets it ahead. Tedesco. Got it over to Ryan. Langell. Ryan here on the near side. Back to Nate Langell. Over on the far side. Sent up high for Bodley. Down the near side once again. Here's Bodley. Finds the outlet pass to Langell. Behind the net. Comes out the other side for Bramley. Up top. Check. With some room to work. Check. In the shooting position. Doesn't take it. Still has it. Knocked out of his stick. Ground ball. He's able to recollect. And he'll just go for a light jog out here and reassess the situation. Gets it to Bodley. This is Sam. Simeon in. That shot goes just wide. And speaking of him, there's Simeon who's going to get to that one first. So Nia Tech retains possession. Pass to Ryan. Ryan with some speed. He'll fire. Nice save there. Comes through for Siena Heights. Jean on the outlet pass to Plemons. We'll just send it right back to Jean. Jean, 6'1", 309 pounds. Much bigger than Tubal's his opposite today. So we'll see if that's a factor in this one. Sien Heights back on the attack. Has had some solid possession time here to open this one up. Plemons gets it right back. Down low for Potter, back to Plemons. Sends it across. There's Medea. They keep moving it around behind the goal now. Hunt. Or on the near side, Potter. Get 
This is Moore with it now. Over to Sismedia. Works his way across the top. Now on the near side. Turns back. Gets it to Plemons. Back to Sismedia. Some room on this strong side here. Trying to dodge. Gets rid of it. Back out into the slot. Shot. That one couldn't find the back of the goal off of Gallagher. Recovering this one is Potter. Another chance here. That one does go in. Jake Gallagher makes it 2-0. Siena Heights. So getting that one back was Gallagher just slid it through. Found a little bit of room there on the low end. And so Tech down a pair here as that pass is airmailed and out of play. So it'll be Tech ball. Just right around the halfway mark here of our first quarter. Again, four 15-minute quarters here. So lots of time left on this one as it's Bramley looking to bring this one up. Actually, that's Musman. My apologies. Ryan. Langel down low. Over to Bodley here along the near side. Takes this one back out high. That's where he likes to do his work. Takes a hack there from Gallagher. Beats him around the corner. We're going to get a whistle. And a little bit of extra love there from Gallagher trying to get that ball from Bodley. So here is Gallagher. Bodley gives him a little bit of love on the way back as he crosses that center line. This is Matthew Kean, probably pronouncing pronouncing that one wrong, but we're going to hope for the best. Hunt goes for a lap behind the goal. Clemens. Over now for Kean. Shot, another goal. Potter, 3-0, Siena Heights. Not going well here for Indiana Tech early in this one as they are down 3-0 and fairly quickly Take a look at the stats. It is, those are behind. They don't even have the second goal put in yet, so we will refrain from referencing that. All right, Robinson does his job. Gets off the field after winning the draw. It's Gallagher here. And Indiana Tech needing a defensive stand here, trying to take this one the other way. Potter, once again. McGrath comes on. We'll take that one over. Gets rid of it. Over to Kean behind the net now. I was Sismedia. Potter. He's checked out by Seaman. Got rid of it. Kean. Potter again. Runs out of room there. Has to hold up. Works it back out high. McGrath. Under five to go. McGrath behind the net. Potter. Up high once again. Moore sends it across. Kean, far side. Kelm kept him wide. Seeing Heights just keeps rotating this one around. Cutting into the middle and shooting, but that one goes wide from Potter. And this will be Indiana Tech ball. Petrowski. Musman. Cross the center. Bodley. Down low. This is Ra Langel. Bodley. Check. 
Send it across. Bramley. Passer more than a shooter. Gets rid of that one. Langell. Check. Indiana Tech tightening it up here. Ryan. Backs up. Indiana Tech really playing this one tight down in the offensive box. Check. Quickly. Bodley. Might have taken the shot. Didn't. Langell. Bodley. Couldn't handle the pass. Has to step out for a minute. 15 seconds on the shot clock, so the Warriors need to get one off here quick. Bramley, far side, looking to shoot. Does. That was actually just a rocket of a pass right out of the slot. Check. Scores. <laughs> Louis Check gets Tech on the board. As the shot clock winds down, Tech able to pick up the pace there, get it in to check, and he'll score. Get Tech on the board. Three to one. 314 to go here. Quarter number one. Well, that's a start for the Warriors, as it looks like they will come out on top with this face off. I spoke too soon. Here's Sienna Heights. The Saints looking to get one back here. Still with the two goal lead. Clemens. Gallagher. Hunt had it for a moment. Comes right back to him now. Finds Clemens. Hunt works away to the far side. Stays wide, gets down low, pass out into the slot. Sienna Height scores. That one coming from Matthew Keehan, and it is four to one, Sienna Heights. The Saints answering right back, not even a minute later, and restore the three goal lead. Shots in this one, an even 6-6. Six, six. The score, however, is not. Garnet Potter already a goal and an assist today. Assist on that last goal to Sismadia. Yeah. And racing in is Gallagher. Gallagher, plenty of space here. Gets through a couple, finally knocked off the play. Now here come the Warriors. Trying to clear this one out was Jarmus. He had to circle back for a minute. Not quick enough. Two bulls regroups. <laughs> Coleman, after Tech able to get it across, settles things down. Works his way over here, near side. And everyone looks to be happy with where they're at now, and so it'll be Bodley to get it going. Racing, got rid of it. Ryan, back out. Dodging into the middle, spin move, firing, but getting stonewalled there. Was well, Cooper Langell, he'll pick it up. Indiana Tech still with position, possession. Ryan in the middle, All right along the goal line, a big save by Jean. He's been up to the task here. He picks that one up and will safely navigate it to Gallagher. Indiana Tech, a couple of looks there, but come up empty-handed as we're about 40 seconds to go here, quarter number one. Wheeling this one is Sismadia. Plemons sends it back across for Gallagher. Coming on is Kean. Worked around to Potter. 
Forced into the corner, sends it out for Plemons. In the middle, that was a rising shot there from Gallagher, but too high, it went long, but it'll still be Sienna Heights ball with 14.4 seconds to go. Bringing this one in was Hunt. Still with it. Under five, has to get a shot off, gets rid of it. Plemons sees the time, doesn't take the shot, and so that'll be the end of quarter number one, and it'll be a four to one deficit here for Indiana Tech, when we come back, you're watching Indiana Tech Men's Lacrosse, brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. I think it's really important for freshmen to realize you get out of college what you put into it. If you dedicate yourself to your classes and to your projects and to what you're doing in college, you're going to have a really great experience here. I wish someone would have told me my freshman year that it's important to prioritize, knowing what's important, what's not important, knowing what I need to do opposed to what I want to do. The two things that I think all freshmen should know is uh, buy a parking permit so you don't rack up a bunch of fines and tickets, and also uh, make sure you go to class because it seems like a good idea when you're skipping, but then it's not worth it in the end when you fail the test or don't turn in homework. As an international student, my advice for the freshmen is to not be afraid to make friends because your friends here will end up being your family away from home. Anything that you want to do, anything that you want to put on, anything that you want to showcase on campus, you can. There's always people around to help you do what you want to do here. Make sure that you always take time for yourself to make sure that you're okay because college can be very overwhelming as far as like schoolwork and friends and sports and just like everyday life. Always just make sure that you get what you need to get done. It's important to have a relationship with your professors because you you become more personable with them. You start to engage in the material more. They can give you recommendations, especially once you get out of college. You definitely want to put them down as like references. And if you have a better personal relationship, it just makes the whole learning experience go smoothly. All right, welcome back here to Warrior Athletic Field. About ready to get started here for the second quarter. A little bit of scoreboard malfunctioning. Not sure if there's going to be a hold up because of that or not. But it is a 4-1 deficit for Indiana Tech. So while we have a second, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the scoring. It is Potter, like I said, two points so far. For Sienna Heights, the only multi-point outing on the score sheet so far. When it comes to the stats, seven shots to eight in favor of Indiana Tech. Ground balls, it's a 16 to 10 lead for Siena Heights. Clears 100% for Siena Heights, five of five. Indiana Tech, just one failed clear, six of seven. Face off, Siena Heights has won five of the six. And that is where we stand to this point. So, ready to go. For quarter number two, Indiana Tech down three. Needs to find a couple of goals here to start closing this one up. They had one, but immediately answering back was Sienna Heights. Fernando Robison, the faceoff specialist, out to do his role here. And it looks like out there against him is Dallin Wirtz, but I only see the first digit of that jersey number, so we'll hold off on that. If it is, he's actually out of Leo High School. A couple of Fort Wayne natives actually on this Tech team now that I'm looking over it. Some Homestead High School players. Homestead, one of the bigger schools here in Fort Wayne. Has a solid lacrosse program. They have... Grant Seaman, Thomas Malzani from Homestead. Jonah Jarmus out of Homestead. Isaiah Flores, Flores out of here. And a couple other scattered Fort Wayne players. No one from my alma mater, Carroll High School, but that's a fairly new lacrosse program. So I think started that um, five, six years ago by now. And I do believe we have a scoreboard hold up because everyone looks ready to go and the scoreboard is still off. So for the meantime, we'll actually just go ahead and step aside. Hopefully it's not too long. This is the Antech Lacrosse brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City. 
home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than Summit City Sports. All right, welcome back. Ready to go. Quarter number two, face off. Clock is not on, so I guess we're just going to be doing the stopwatch method, so we will not know how much time is on the clock unless they get that figured out. But it was another face-off win there for Robison. So Sienna Heights will have possession here to get us started. Pressure's on. Can't be messing up the score here on our end because if it's wrong, we might not know. Controlling this one was Hunt. Took a couple of stick checks and was like, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this one. Those do not feel good in today's cold weather. He's got a shot here, and he puts it in the net. And so Sienna Heights leads 5-1 here early second quarter. As we'll look at this on the replay, shook off those stick checks. Caught this one. Has some room over here with which to work. And he just fires it, makes no mistake. Sienna Heights... Putting it together here so far today. And the official announcement is Hunnett is how you say his name. So we'll see if that proves to be uh, – we'll just go with that. Back to it. Face-off win. We'll get a whistle right off of it. And it will be Sienna Heights ball. Off of the goal. But as I was saying, it's a – crisp 40 degrees here but some winds coming through it feels colder than that the feel is in the low 30s seeing the heights keying once again nice find there for Moore tried to send it down into the slot area for Sismedia Tech trying to clear it Having to navigate this one out almost entirely on his lonesome is Jack Marcourt, and he does. But it was not easy at times. Brings it across, gets rid of it. And it'll be Indiana Tech to go on the attack here. Josh Bramley looks to facilitate the offense. Tech now down four behind the net for Ryan. Now for Bodley. Up top, Langill. Nice cut there to the right. Looked to shoot, didn't have the lane, had knocked out of his stick, and it'll trickle on goal to Vinny Jean, who will play it up. Here's Gallagher racing up the near side. Cross the center line, slows it down, and everyone will get set. Right around the Probably about 12.50 mark, it looks like, based on the latest stats update. And that's really our only method for keeping track of time at the moment. And the connection can be a little spotty here sometimes. Doesn't always automatically update, so we'll just hope for the best. This is Medea. Trying to cut. Looks like he tried to throw that one on net. Rolling, though. Clemens up to Hutton. Pass broken up there from Moore. And Indiana Tech will capitalize. They'll take over. Trying to clear this one. This Petrowski gets it ahead. Ryan racing up. Numbers here for Indiana Tech for a moment, it looks like. Dishes it off. Back out to Bodley. This is Simeon. Sends it up to the incoming Solon. Solon. And Solon sends it down to Langell. Now it's Bramley's turn. Out high. Sends it across. Sam Bodley. Cooper Langell to his brother Nate. Around this side to Coleman. Solon. Tried to cut back, had it fall out of his stick. 
Wisnick picks it up. Gets through two, almost makes two Warriors knock each other down to the turf. Lost the handle on it. I think we're gonna have penalty here. No, we're not. It's gonna be Sienna Heights ball, much to the dismay of the home crowd here, really giving it to this official right in front of us. But the call has been made. It'll be Gallagher with it. Sienna Heights ball. Potter. Kean over to Plemons. Kean, far side. Comes back out to Plemons. McGrath. Send it to Sismadia. Here's Sismadia. Put it in gear there for a second. Made the pass. Over to Plemons. Sismadia cutting in front. Doesn't get it. Low shot in the goal there for Siena Heights. And Tubal's getting in uh, that guy's face. That is Sismadia. But nonetheless, it's a goal for Siena Heights. That's going to make it 6 1. And Indiana Tech not on their A game here today. As we'll just take a look at the tail end of that goal and the ensuing little altercation there. As that was not Tubal's, that was Seaman. Gallagher credited with the goal. 10.08 on the clock after that goal. 6-1, so Tech got to get it together here quickly. Robinson wins the draw, but there was a violation, and so it'll actually be picked up by Indiana Tech, and they'll look to cut into this five-goal deficit at Siena Heights is accumulated. Jack Marquardt. Bramley, Langell, along the GLE, Tech still has it. Didn't have any options, sent it back down low. Marquardt faked the shot. Cutting, shooting, having that shot blocked, that was McComer. Comes out top, Sam Bodley, fires, scores! So Bodley finds one and Tech cuts the deficit back down by one. Bodley whipped that one, looked like from my angle it might have hit off the side of the net. Did not, found the back of it and Sam Bodley has made it six to two by Indiana Tech. So back down to four for Indiana Tech. Probably right around the eight minute mark to go here in this half. It'll be Indiana Tech again controlling off of the draw. Behind the net, Langell. Bramley. Wasn't quite ready to handle that one, but he ended up picking it up. Harassing him there for a moment, though, was Callahan. Here's Sam Bodley again. Goes on the run. Looks for the passing option. This is Simeon Bodley. Cutting, shooting, but couldn't find it. John made the save. And Sienna Heights will go on the attack. Probably right around the eight minute mark now. Turn, turn over here, Indiana Tech the other way. Ryan, Ryan shoots low, that one goes wide. Bramley gets this one going. Ryan over to Check. Louis Check looking for it, firing, that one zipped wide. Found the back fence, but Tech closest to it will retain possession 
As it's Langill. Simeon Bodley down on the far corner. Finds in the middle. Couldn't hook up. Chasing this one is Ryan. He's going to get there just in the nick of time to keep it alive. Here is Ryan. Dodges left. Hangs on to it. Cuts back. Boxed out there. Tries to go back the other way. Still doesn't have any room. That's Snyder there. Worked around. Sam Bodley. Pump fake. Tried to send that one left. Went out. Langell has to go on a quick jog to find another ball. As a lot of them that are originally lined up over there have already been used up. Here is Langell. Sends it out for Ryan. Shoots. That one also wide and nearly into the parking lot. But Nets back there able to stop that one. Simeon Bodley brings this one in. Simeon up top comes around to Samuel. Bodley. He'll shoot. That one zips through the goal mouth as well. And Tech definitely letting the shots fly, but not many of them on goal right now. That's three or four in the last minute that have gone long out of bounds. Tech still retaining possession, though, trying to feed that one through the middle to Bodley. Whistles blow. It'll go the other way. And we'll have a penalty flag thrown. And judging by the crowd reaction, that'll be on Indiana Tech. But either way, down in the offensive box. Clemens has it for Siena Heights. Flag still sitting there. Moore. Clemens. Down there for Potter. Potter. Clemens. Gets it back to Potter. Hang on to it. Feeds it in the middle, right back out for Plemons. Looks to shoot that one high. It might have been more of a pass. Had a couple of guys down low there. And with that, we will find out what the flag was thrown for. And it will be a man-up advantage for the Saints. Here as we are approaching probably about the five-minute mark of the frame. Try and pull up the stats on my phone if we can get better updating going that route. Either way, here we go. Sienna Heights, Plemons, pass misfired. Trying to track this one down to Sismadia. It goes out and Indiana Tech gonna take over on this one. Comes up, bringing it across, Indiana Tech. Firing, trying to bounce that one up and in was Flanagan. Didn't work out for him that time, but Indiana Tech still gonna have possession here. They were the first ones to it. Still waiting to get what the penalty was to come through, Bramley. Coleman, up for Ryan. Ryan, has some room, backed off. Simeon Bodley, Langell, cutting in the middle. Had it knocked out of his stick, still loose down there, but picked up by Vinnie John. Bad pass taken over here by Indiana Tech. Tedesco got it across. Bramley kills some time. A warning coming through here. So five minutes to go, second quarter. Ryan up top for Solon. Tech still working it around. Bramley. Up 
Penalty on Bodley was for delay of game. 30-second advantage. Shot there bounced wide. Indiana Tech will still be with it. Solon, Ryan, Andrew Ryan. Bramley. Still has it. Over to Solon. Far side, Ryan. Looks to shoot, sends that one just wide. A little upset with himself as that one goes long out of bounds, but Tech will still have it. It'll be Langell to get it going here. As we approach halftime here, Tech still down 6-2. Bramley behind Langell, right out in far side. Ryan trying to cut, shoots, scores! <laughs> Tech gets another one back, and it's Andrew Ryan. So Tech gets it down to th here in the second quarter. Still a little bit of a ways to go, but if Tech could maybe give it one more before heading to the dressing room, that would be a big help in aiding the comeback. We're down by as many as five at one point. And so off the face-off violation, it'll be Sienna Heights to control. Plemons. Key in. Back to Plemons. See, the Heights really not having a lot of ball time here in the last few minutes as Tech really stepped it up. Even when they took that penalty, I mean, shorthanded. They still controlled for all but maybe 10 seconds of that man up advantage for Sienna Heights as the pass was a little bit too far behind Hundit. And Tech back on the attack. Ryan has one of the goals already. Fired, saved there by Jean. Plumpins gets it across. Flag thrown. Couple of out there. Potter. Plemon. By Seaman. Almost all the way out to the logo, and he gets rid of it. Two minute warning comes through. Potter. Died. Potter. Pottied off of that one was Hammer. And we will have some subs come on as it'll be a man up opportunity here once again for the Saints. One thirty-four on the clock. Scoreboard's still not back on, so we'll see if they spend some time messing with that during halftime. Sismadia had it, but immediately got rid of it. Far side. Plemons, pass was broken up, but still found its intended target. Potter, right back to Plemons. Down low, Sismadia has a look, forced wide now. Potter, thought about taking the shot for a second, forced out. And there for Gallagher, Gallagher cut into the net, still has it, spins back around. 
Tech doing a good job. They swarm there. Got it off. Whistle's blowing here. We'll get a pause. There's some great play there. And Siena Heights will take a timeout with 53 seconds to go. We will use one as well. Watching Indiana Tech men's lacrosse. Brought to you by SummerCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Good luck, Tammy. See you, David. Things happen. How do you make the unexpected happen? Take the next step with an online degree from Indiana Tech. Start with a visit to one of our two new Chicago area enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. You'll discover a wide range of affordable undergraduate and graduate degrees with flexible class schedules designed to fit your lifestyle and help you earn a degree sooner than you'd expect. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome back. 53 seconds on the clock here in our first half, and we'll step aside for the halftime break. Man up opportunity here still for Siena Heights. 30 seconds for offsides was the call. Knocked out of the stick. Seaman doing a great job. Gets the clear. Nice play by Seaman. Takes one down with him. Gets a little bit of extra love here. That one is probably going to draw a penalty on Chance Snyder. And that one gets the Tech bench going as it comes over to Langell. He'll fire that one blocked before it got even halfway to the net. Picked up. Passed off. And we're going to get a timeout there from Indiana Tech. So we will step aside once again. 31 seconds to go, Indiana Tech Lacrosse, SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there's so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. We have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. Welcome back. 31 seconds to go here. First half. It will be Indiana Tech's ball to get this one going. And we'll see if they can add another one to cut the deficit to just two. That would be huge going to the dressing room. And we'll get the clock running here. And starting it off, it's check. Bodley, Ryan, Andrew Ryan. Up top, fires, scores! Andrew Ryan, a huge goal to cut the deficit as we'll take a look at it on the replay. 14 seconds to go, and Tech gets the deficit back down to two. And he is loving that one, as he should. Tech building the momentum here, going into the half. As that is goal number two for Ryan. And 10 seconds to go. Still loose. No one quite able to get, pick it up. Countdown is on, and that'll be it 
for the first half. Fired all the way down. And that is how the first half will end. 6-4 is the lead for Siena Heights, but a great finish to that half by the Warriors. We will step aside. Indiana Tech Lacrosse brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science, some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands on with the materials I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're gonna to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful, helpful guy, and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. and. I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the 
panels we have down in the basement to set it up as a off the grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in a, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year uh, focusing on geothermal energy and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us and for me that was the highlight of my of my college time. I mean we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal and but it wasn't just learning about that it was also learning about their culture as well you know and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future and all those things combined I think really really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome back to the Warrior Athletic Field here on the campus of Indiana Tech. The Warriors down 6-4 to four here as we approach the end of halftime, but put together a little three-goal comeback so far here after going down 6-1. to one. We'll take a quick look 
at some of the stats through the first 30 minutes before we get ready for the second half shots. It's 22 to 10 in favor of Indiana Tech. So they're letting it fly. They're just not finding the back of the goal quite as much. They've picked up 20 ground balls as opposed to 25 for the Saints. Clears 9 of 11 for Siena Heights, 10 of 11 for Indiana Tech. Faceoffs, Siena Heights, 8 of 12. Indiana Tech, of course, then is 4 of 12. They've only turned the ball over eight times. Sienna Heights has turned it over 13 times. And both penalties so far in this one belong to the Warriors as they look to bring this one back. Multi-point games so far on the stat sheet. Potter now up to three points, one goal, two assists. Jake Gallagher the opposite. He's got two goals, one assist. For the Warriors, Andrew Ryan's got two goals. Nate Langell with two assists. Sam Bodley, one goal, one assist, and then just to round it out for Indiana Tech, McComer with an assist and check with a goal. So that is where we are at, about ready to go here. Scoreboard still uh, not quite working, so we'll be uh, probably getting time in five-minute intervals for the first little bit. And we, of course, know what the score is. It is six to four as we are ready to get started here for quarter number three. Get that scoreboard loaded up and ready to go. The team's out on the field, and we are about ready to go. As it's Fernando Robinson, Robinson, the defending whack defender of the week. And he'll do his job there. He'll win it. And will now be 9 of 13 on the draw. Speaking of 13, here's Gallagher. And right on the attack are the Saints. Looking to improve to 6-3. and 5-0 and in whack play if they were, were to hold on. But if memory serves me correctly, Indiana Tech was down for a lot of that game against Aquinas a week or two ago, and they ended up winning that one. The women's team here on Wednesday, they were losing for almost the entire game. They ended up winning by two or three. So two goal deficit here is something that can definitely be made up with how much this Indiana Tech team can score. 22 goals in their last game. Won their last two by a combined 34 goals. So scoring not typically an issue. This has been a low scoring one too. Just 10 combined goals. It's been fairly tight. And after this, we will see the Warriors back here next Saturday at 4 o'clock against the Cleary Cougars. That one should not have any shortage of goals for Indiana Tech. Shot clock expires. So Indiana Tech, great defensive effort there to start the half. And they will take over, not even a shot for Siena Heights as we get alerted. 13 and a half on the clock off of that violation. Louis Check brings this one across the center line. Check. Plenty of room. Shoots. That one goes just wide. But Bramley in position to get to that one first. And Tech will retain possession. Back to Bramley. Bodley going an assist so far today. Looking to add more. Got one fall in there. Didn't have the shot. Sent it down low to Simeon, his brother. Up top. Ryan, low shot. Off the post. That one hammered it, but stayed out. Chasing that one down is Langell. Great effort there. Gets it to Ryan. So Tech, another opportunity here. Ryan dodges into the middle. Still going. Has some room. Had it come out of his stick. Picked up there by the Saints. And that'll settle things down for the time being. It's in the stick of Wissink. Ryan almost knocked it out and did actually. Here's Langell. Langell, plenty of room. Partial breakaway sends out one just wide. Looking to maybe spike that one down bottom left, but just missed his spot. Sienna Heights takes over. Jean, long pass up ahead for Hammer. 12 minutes remaining in the third quarter. 
you might be getting 90 second time updates at this point. 12 minutes on the clock. Would not necessarily be opposed to that. Says Medea. Potter. Here's Potter. Forced out high by the defense of Tedesco. It's McGrath's turn. Comes around again on the near side. Back out Potter. Didn't catch that one initially, but no trouble picking it up. Rising shot there from Gallagher is getting up in his face was Jarmus. We'll get a stoppage here and figure something out. Some, about four players changing here for Indiana Tech. And it will be a penalty One minute. with 11-21. And it is a minute penalty to Indiana Tech. So that's the cause of the changes. Didn't see the flags thrown out. Nonetheless, that's okay. Potter for Hunnett. Far side now, Kean. Or Quillen. I like that better. Quillen. Potter. This is Medea. Inside. Big save there for Two Bulls as Gallagher tried to sneak that one in up high. Two Bulls a little hop and got the stick on it and sent it over the net. So with it, low shot. That one off the side of the goal from Gallagher. Two Bulls going to pick this one out of the netting. And a fresh 80 seconds as Indiana Tech takes over here. Bouncing pass, can't collect it, rolls out. It'll stay down here though, Sienna Heights picks up. Hunt it. This is Medea out high. Plemons tried to feed it down low. Two bulls had it in a stick for a moment. Couldn't collect it. Behind the goal, it'll be Indiana Tech taking this one over. Tubles looks to start it ahead. Passes this one up. Craddock couldn't handle it, but Ryan can. Now here's Ryan. Wheeling. Pass. Langell. Take the pass. Down low for Ryan. Ryan. That was a nice shot. Couldn't connect or find the back of the net, though. But Langell was on the scene, and Tech will control as it comes in. Under 10 minutes to go. Bramley. Cooper Langell. Cooper to the right. Over to down low. That's actually, I believe, Coleman. Ryan. Shot score. What a nice one there. Back within one. Ryan, a little bit of a no-look shot here. Wound up and ripped this one to the far side. This was beautiful, a great angle of it here. Not even really looking, just whiffs that one through there. And Ryan, I believe that makes it three for him. So it's 6-5. So there you go, Indiana Tech right back within one. Kind of started slow the first about quarter and a half or so, give or take, but have come back strong in the time since then and looking to do it again. And Sismadia really back checking hard and a penalty called there. And so it'll be Indiana Tech with the man up advantage as Sismadia was all over Petrowski, Petrakowski. And he's going to get some love from the bench for that one. And Sismedia, about from the restraining line all the way back up to the center, was just draped on him, throwing some stick checks. And then when Pritchakowski fell, there's really no doubt about that one. 
not a lacrosse connoisseur, but I mean, that one is a little self-explanatory. So a one minute penalty, 9.08 is on the clock, and here you go, man up advantage for Indiana Tech, their first of the afternoon. Looking to tie this one up, a big opportunity here, Nate Langell. Bramley, back to Langell. Bramley, usually the assist man more than the shooter. Has it here, pass down low, Langell, just below the goal line. Solon, up top, Ryan. Bodley. Check. Tight box here for the Warriors behind the net. Nate Langell. Bramley. Faked pass in the middle. Cocked back like he was going to shoot. There's Ryan. He pump faked. Gets to check. Check. Leaves it for Langell. Langell setting up shot behind the net. Bramley. Back to Langell. At high. Bodley looking to shoot. Had that lane blocked. Held off. Ryan. Nice for reinforcements. Bramley fires that one. The reinforcements come in for the Saints. Getting to this one first will be Sienna Heights. And so that should help them out as that probably about does it for the man up advantage. Gallagher brings this one across. As Sismadia is back out there. So Sienna Heights survives that man up advantage from Indiana Tech. Quillen. Back to him. Quillen tries it again. He was playing catch there for a little bit with Moore. Now will work on his own, try and create the shot. And his pass to Sismadia there misfired. But Plemons hustles to it, picks it up. Plemons, pass down low. Up high, Potter looks to shoot. That one goes just wide, a little bit of a bouncer. Two Bulls able to handle it. Sismadia will be first on the scene though, so still Siena Heights ball. Probably down in about seven and a half minute mark. Should get an update here at some point soon. Referees having a discussion here right at the restraining line. We'll see if anything comes of this. Giving some signal to the scoring table. I think uh, all is well, it seems like. Yeah, I think we'll finally be ready to get this going here. Uh, looking for a shot clock reset, I think is what Sienna Heights is looking for. Didn't get it, so there's 20 seconds on that shot clock. So there we go, seven minutes. More low shot in the score there by Eric Sismadia. He'll get it back out to two goal lead here for Siena Heights. So Sismedia finds another one. That's his first of the game. He's got an assist to go with it. And the Saints back on top by two here. Just under seven to play in the third quarter. Six fifty two the official time. And another face off win there for Fernando Robison. Had it stripped from him though, so Indiana Tech will have it. And it's Nate Langell. So Tech looks to go back on the attack, get back within one again. As past the halfway mark here in the third quarter. Langell. Back up, Sam Bodley. Here he goes. Pass just a little bit out of the reach of Langell, so that's a turnover. And Sienna Heights will get at it here. It'll be Snyder to start the clear here. 
Sends it back to Jean. Long pass. Picked up and gotten across there and falling in the process. Was someone for Sienna Heights and an open net completely missed by Plemons had the whole net and sent it high as we'll try and sneak in a look at that one. Uh, I might have missed something because that is a toughie if not. We'll sneak in a quick look at it here. Draws a defender and I mean maybe someone got a piece of his stick there as we'll come back live. That one goes out of bounds. It looks like Sienna Heights will still have it though. So a missed opportunity there for Plemons to make it 8-5. Potter right along the line. Seaman doing a great job on him, still with it. Potter finally passes it off and take it away. Here we go, Flanagan had knocked out of his stick. Picks it right back up and just sends it across. Nice pass on target there to Ryan. Ryan cutting into the crease. I think that was a pass, still there. Shooting and scoring, Nate Langell gets Indiana Tech back within one. And a nice effort there to get that one ahead. And Langell gets on the board here. That's the first goal of the day for Langell. He's got two assists to go with it. And so Tech back with in one. Shots are 29 to 18 in favor of Indiana Tech. They still trail by one though. Robinson wins the draw. Clemens will just roll this one back for Gallagher. Clemens down, Potter. Moore. Forced out of the box. Got it over to Plemons. Plemons cuts back into the middle. Forced all the way wide there by Coleman. They both go down, but Plemons still has it. Coleman still on him. Plemons gets rid of it. This is Medea. Gallagher. Potter. Has Jarmus's stick in him. In his business. Pass into the middle. Two bulls intercepts. Two bulls whips one. Ground ball. Must have gotten blocked along the way. Flag thrown. I think this is Sis Medea again. As he's talking to the official a little bit. He was in the vicinity. And we'll see if he's going to head off here. As there was really no one in the direction of the play from Tubles. As Tubles, I think, is actually going to be the one in trouble here. He heads off and will grab a seat. So Chad Nebel will come in. He's a senior, 5'10", out of Royal Oak, Michigan. Is a goaltender, but is smaller than Tubles. And it's a one minute for slashing on Tubles. So that is a new one. So man up here for the Saints. We're going to make it two goals once again. About four minutes to go at the time of the penalty. It was a slash to two ball. That was more for a moment. And looking for him was Sismadia. Went through his legs. Now here's Indiana Tech. Sam Bodley. He turns on the Jets. Has a break at the net here. Cutting across and scoring. Sam Bodley evens this one up. Short-handed, the errant pass. Bodley throws this one into sport mode, cuts through, and a beautiful goal there by Bodley. And the fellows are excited, look at that. You love to see the energy, Ryan and Bodley getting into it, and why not, tied up.
And I think we might be getting a timeout here from Siena Heights. And we will go ahead and use one as well. Indiana Tech Lacrosse brought to you by SomeCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. All right, welcome back. Ready to go here. So we are tied up at seven following the goal from Bodley. Sam Bodley, two goals so far today. 3.17 is the time here. It's off the faceoff. Looks like Tech might get this one, and they do. So bringing it across is going to be Flanagan. He'll dish it to Bodley and make his way over to the sub box. Jack Marquardt gets to the incoming Ryan. All tied up. Tech was once down six to one and charged all the way back. Bodley slows up, bodied up there by Gallagher. Still has it, flag thrown. This one's gonna be on Siena Heights. Ryan. Two bulls back in net for Indiana Tech, by the way. Ryan. Pass, looking for check, couldn't connect. Bramley picks up. Under 20 seconds on the shot clock. Tech needs to get it going here. There is the flag down. This is Bramley behind for Langell. Right out in front, Simeon Bodley scores. Tech leads. <laughs> Sam ties it, Simeon puts Tech up top. The Bodley brothers getting it done here for Indiana Tech. Langell with the nice pass. Bodley with the finish. One fifty nine on the clock. And Tech has taken the lead here in this one. Sienna Heights will take over on the face-off. Over on the far side, Tech, the Tech bench getting into it. And they're loving something. And it'll be Tech's ball here. It was six to one, 10 8 on the clock in the second quarter. Since then, it has been all tech. A minute and a half to go, third quarter. This is Coleman. Had to knock that his stick. Coleman falls down trying to get to it. Fell right on top of it, and I think Sienna Heights is gonna get this one. Nope, it will still be tech. This is Cooper Langell. Tech with a little bit of a different unit than the normal out here. That is still Nate Langell behind. This is Emmett Coleman back to Langell. 
Over to McComer. McComer's out there, as is Solon, so is Cooper Langell. This is Cooper. Langell. Boxed out, couldn't get access down into the crease area. Coleman. Left side now, Solon. Probably about a minute to go here any time now. Oh, that was wrong. 30 seconds. Shot and another goal. Cooper Langell. The Warriors in fuego right now. Cooper Langell getting in on the action. 25 seconds to go on this one. Here you go. Coleman out high. Langell wastes no time. Had to jump up and just rip that one. So Tech really turning it on here in the second half. As I don't even know if Siena Heights has scored in this half. They did score one. They did score one. But four unanswered here for Tech so far. Plemons behind the net. Not much time to work with here. You hear the countdown. About five seconds to go. Get it inside. Low shot rising up for Sismadia. Sends it long. That'll get a stop, but probably three seconds to go. And there you go, just flung all the way down. But no point in that one, and so that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. Tech storms all the way back. They've taken the lead. They lead by two. We'll step aside. Indiana Tech Lacrosse brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. All right, welcome back. Cutting that one just a tad short, ready to go for the fourth quarter. While we get this one started, we'll take a look at some of the team stats. It's 20 shots for Siena Heights as they will win that faceoff. 32 shots for Indiana Tech. They are now 5 of 20. For Actually, that one has already been updated, so they are 5 of, okay, 5 of 20. On faceoffs, 15 of 24 Sienna Heights. 12 for 15 on clears are the Saints. And conversely, Indiana Tech on clears, 15 of 17. Four penalties in this one for Indiana Tech for a total of three minutes is rushing this one up the field is check. We'll table that discussion for a moment. Whipped across for Ryan. Has to chase this one back down. Sienna Heights is one penalty for a total of one minute. 
And so here we go, action. Siena, excuse me, Indiana Tech controls it. This is Ryan. He's got a few today. Check. Bodley again. And getting down and making the save on that one was Jean. On the clear, Callahan just sent it back to Jean. Into the middle for Quillen. Couldn't handle that one. Bodley lost his stick trying to pick it up. And getting it across. Having it now knocked out. He lost his stick too. Quillen. And so Simeon Bodley brings this one into the box. Down low. Langell. Couldn't get the shot off. Has to drop the ball. Sienna Heights is going to take over. Here's Callahan again. Finds Potter, but Potter just finds three or four white jerseys right in his way. Still has it. Hasn't gotten rid of it yet. It's forced back. He's now able to get it across to Callahan as he's across the center line. Coming over to say hi to Desco. Callahan sent it down, forces Medea. Plemons. Sienna Heights really not their best quarter there in the third frame. Looking to reestablish a lead. They're down by two. After leading by five in the second quarter. Really didn't even have a whole lot of ball time either in a, at third frame. Pass all the way across. Potter. Plemons looking for Sismadia. Reaches the stick out with one hand. Makes the catch. Plemons falls. Sismadia trying to pick this one up. Can't do it. Shot clock resets as they were down to their last 10. Tedesco navigates this one to safety across the center line. Over to Sam Bodley. Twelve minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Three minutes gone here in our fourth frame. Fourth and final frame. Ryan goes for a light jog out here towards the center. Send it across. This is Cooper Langell. In the middle, Bodley a shot. That one falls just short and bounces out of bounds. But Coleman is back there and is going to gather this one up. Started over for the Warriors. Got it to Solon. Shot, that one whistled wide and out of bounds. 33 seconds on the shot clock as it'll be Nate Langell back for the ball. He'll bring it in. Sent up high, Sam Bodley. Sam packs off, sends it down low. Langell to Ryan. Ryan cuts, has some room, shoot! That one goes trickling wide of the goal right. As Tech, a lot of shots, not a ton of them on goal. I think looking at the stats, it was only a couple of saves here for the goaltender, Jean. Knocked out of the stick there of Coslo. Sorry. Looking at the wrong roster, I think. Solon chases this one down. Bodley. Bodley drops it back. Cooper Langell. Cooper to Ryan. Solon, near side. Works down towards the goal line. Up top, Bodley faked the shot, now he takes it. That one blocked in front by Gallagher, who is right on him. And Sienna Heights is gonna come up with this one. Callahan gonna get to it, find Snyder. Tech bringing some pressure as Sienna you know, Heights tries to navigate this one out. And getting it across is Gallagher. Under 10 to go. Tech leads by two. Still no goals here in this fourth quarter. Tech has scored, I believe it's four unanswered. 
and have really dominated since about the halfway point of the second quarter. This is going to be Sienna Heights ball. And I think it's in the stick of Sismadia, and it is. Quillen. Pass broken up. Nice defense there by Petrakowski. Two Bulls gets the pass up ahead for Coleman. Coleman able to clear this one across. Over to Bodley. Works a bind for Langell. Comes near side now, Ryan. Nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Nine minutes remaining. Ryan turns on the Jets. Pass this one up to check. Bodley, another shot, save there by Jean. Finds it in the stick off the rebound. And we'll look to clear this one up. Gallagher gets it across to Quillen, who couldn't handle it, ground ball. Picked up Tech, nope, can't quite collect it yet. Two on two battle at a third for Indiana Tech. Someone finally has picked it up, and it's Sienna Heights. It was Gallagher who guided it over to Potter. Potter just runs right over the pick that Plemons was trying to set. Flag is thrown. Potter takes a couple of stick checks from Seaman. Hunt it. We'll take a couple from Craddock. Sismadia pass out into the slot and couldn't hook up with the teammate there. And we'll get the whistle. And it'll be a man up now for Sienna Heights off the penalty. We'll see if it's a one minute or a 30 second penalty. It is one minute for an unnecessary roughness. 7.37 on the clock. A couple of groans ring out here from the crowd. So big opportunity here for Siena Heights to get one back. They gave up a shorthanded goal to Bodley that tied it up. Looking to earn that one back with the man up goal here. It'll start with Sismadia here on the near side. Talked a little bit about Sismadia there in our pregame. 29 goals on the season coming into the day, 38 points. The WAC Offensive Player of the Week tied for third in the conference in points. Had it there, got rid of it. Plemons, far side and a goal there. Nice shot comes through from Gallagher, and Sienna Heights is within one. We'll see it here on the replay as the low launch angle, low shooting angle, sends that one top corner. Gallagher the assist to Plemons. Seven twenty-two to go. So Siena Heights does capitalize on the man up opportunity. And off the draw, it will once again be on tech side of the field. Up top, Plemons feeds it in. That's a long high riser that goes out of bounds, but Sienna Heights will get to it first. Potter has about 6.45 estimation to go. Almost found one there to tie it up. That one just rolled a little bit too far wide. Indiana Tech will take over here. They lead by one. 
Tubles, stretch pass ahead. Able to pick that one off the bounce was Craddock. Sends it to Bramley. Bramley wheeling this one hard around to the other side. Bodley. Back to Bramley. Now it's Jack Marcourt. Bodley. Sam Bodley, shooting position. Opted to pass that one off. Marcourt. Cuts back to the left. Boxed out. Tries it again. Other side. Nope. Bodley. Cocked and ready to fire and does. Gets his own rebound. Shoots again. That one saved by Jean. A great effort there from the Saints goaltender. I think we heard six minutes to go. Tech looking to restore the two goal lead. It's been a good tight game so far. Tech 9-0 on the season. Sienna Heights 5-3. This game has whack implications for the top seed. Indiana Tech has already beaten Aquinas. Sienna Heights, I believe, still has the fifth ranked other Saints on their schedule for later on in the season. Sienna Heights will likely move into the top 10 upon the next release of the poll, I believe in a week or two, as there's a little bit of a uh, lapse here in the early portion of April. But Sienna Heights, that four game win streak on the line here in this one, as they were a hot starting whack play and have played a good game here today. Despite blowing the five goal lead, still very much in this one. One goal down with five minutes to go. Clemens into the middle. That pass from Moore couldn't connect on it. And Tech will gather it in. Sent way ahead. Off target looking for Seaman. It's a turnover. Now here comes Sienna Heights. Able to get this one back across. Hunt it. Gave it to Plemons. Now it's with Gallagher. Back to Plemons again. Getting down to crunch time here for Sienna Heights, but goals can be scored in a hurry if necessary. Plemons. Bad pass there, looking for Gallagher. Knocked out of the stick there of Moore. Tech takes over, gets it to Tubles. Tubles into the middle here, here for Durham. And he'll walk this one across the line on his own. Take it down there by Gallagher and we're gonna get a whistle here. It'll be Indiana Tech's ball. There won't be a man up advantage. The Warriors are gonna make some changes here as a big chance here to add an insurance goal. Check one of the newcomers. See if he can find one here. Check has one today. Would love to make it two here in the clutch situation. But perfectly content for the time being to just kill some time here. 50 seconds on the shot clock. He'll pass it off, but a bad pass misses the target. And it goes past Ryan, so that's a turnover. Sienna Heights will get this one. Or will they? It looks like they will not. I stand corrected, so Indiana Tech will get the chance here. It'll be Solon presenting his stick to the official. All right, we are a go once again. Bramley. It was a penalty. So 30 second advantage here for Tech. Bramley. Back to him. Bramley. This is it off. That one broken up there by Snyder, but a goal for Indiana Tech. <laughs> a 
Look at this one on the replay. Indiana Tech comes up and makes it a two goal lead. Bramley here, that one was broken up, but it was recovered by Bodley and he adds his third of the game. So a huge goal there for Bodley. Two minutes and I believe 49 seconds on the clock. And Indiana Tech with a two goal lead now. It's 10-8. And they have it once again. Knocked out of the stick of Coleman. Now racing the other way are the Saints. Sent across to Potter. Gallagher. Has a couple of Warriors on him. And a timeout will be called by the Saints with 2.15 to go. We'll step aside and use one as well. Indiana Tech Lacrosse brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on like festivals, I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. All right, welcome back. 2.13 on the clock, and while we have it, we'll take a minute to look at the stats. 40 to 23 are the shots, clears. 20 of 23, Indiana Tech. 18 of, 20, 20, 18 of 22 for Siena Heights. Faceoffs, 16 to 6. Advantage for the Saints. They have the ball now. It's Sismedia. Got it behind the net. Potter. It is becoming do or die time for Siena Heights. Down by two. Less than two minutes to go. There is the official two more pass in the middle. Shot, big save by Tubles as Gallagher couldn't put that one in. Cleared here by the Warriors. Wheeling this one ahead. Musman gets it off. Bramley slows it down and will just kill a little bit of clock here. Tech will have to take a shot here at some point. Can't let the shot clock just run out. A minute and a half to go. Bramley, a lot of room here. Bramley into the middle. Didn't even look for the shot. Gets it off. Bodley, check. Check, stands all on his lonesome here. No rush here from the Warriors. Check. Bodley, this is Simeon. That's Sam now. Andrew Ryan. Ryan cutting into the middle. A minute to go, still has it. Shot clock approaching 20 seconds. A little bit less than a 40 second differential. Bodley, that one sky high, social distancing from the crossbars. 14 on the shot clock. 46 is what's on the game clock. We're told that the actual clock uh, station thing is working, but for whatever reason, it's just not showing up on the actual scoreboard. Ryan, backhand. That one goes just wide. Rolls out of bounds. Five seconds on the shot clock. It'll still belong to Indiana Tech. He'll just let the shot clock run out here. Will Langell just flings that one, gets rid of it. And so it'll be Siena Heights ball. 
30 seconds to go. They're down by two. Need one quick here. Tech trying to disrupt the clear. Gallagher, Sienna Heights really in no rush here. Pass blocked, knocked down, picked up, brought across. Jarmus across the center line, that's going to do it. Indiana Tech down 6-1 in the second quarter. Come all the way back with a great third quarter. They'll win 10-8. And we are officially final here. The Warriors in this one take it 10 to 8. Like I said, 6 1 down, come all the way back. They'll improve to 10 and 0. And 5 and 0 in WAC conference play. On the other side, Sienna Heights goes back to 5 and 4. They'll drop their first WAC contest. Their next game will come Wednesday at home against Concordia for Indiana Tech. Their next contest is Wednesday as well. That'll be a 4.30 start on the road against Madonna. They'll be back here on Saturday at 4 o'clock once again to take on the Cleary Cougars. Do a brief rundown here of some of the standout stats for Indiana Tech. Andrew Ryan, the three goals today. Nate Langell, three assists, one goal, four points. Sam Bodley, three goals and couple of huge ones on top of one assist. He's got four points. Shot, the shot's finished at 42-24 Indiana Tech. Multi-point games for Siena Heights. There are a few of them. Two points apiece for Plemons and Sismedia. A goal and two assists for Potter. Three goals, one assist for Gallagher. And a goal and an assist for Hudnett. So the teams will shake hands. And that will do it for this one here from Warrior Athletic Field. From my cameraman, Connor Hendrickson, my name is Joe Hacker. We thank you for joining us on this Saturday afternoon. Have a great rest of your night. This has been Indiana Tech Men's Lacrosse, brought to you by SummitCitySports.com.